Are you confused by Corsair's case fan naming schemes? Well, so am I. Welcome back to FTW Tech. I'm your host, Isaiah, and today I have a really fun video for you guys. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded. I'm very sorry about that. I've been busy with a lot of extracurriculars for school and such as I'm trying to get into a good college and stuff, as, as you do, you know. So, uh, Corsair. We're going to talk about Corsair fans today. So, Corsair's plethora of RGB fan options. It can sometimes, they can, they can blur together, uh, and, and it can be hard to differentiate. Uh, so that's what we're going to go through today. So, um, it can be difficult to differentiate between all these series. You've got HD, QL, M ML, LL, and SP for RGB fan series. Um, so today I'll go through all of the options you have from Corsair as well as provide you with a guide as to which you should buy. Make sure you check out my written tech content website linked in the description. Um, but so let's get into this. So the Corsair HD120 and SP120 fans marked Corsair's first foray into the RGB fan market. I'm pretty sure on that. Um, the HD120 fans were meant to occupy a higher price tier. Um, by the way, the reason you're going to see me looking down, I've got my computer here, I've uh, got some notes, so yeah. The SP120s uh, are a little bit cheaper. There's the SP120 and the SP120 Pro, we'll get to the Pros later. So the SP120s, the normal ones, RGB, they feature four RGB LEDs uh, on the fan. Um, while the HD120s pack 12 each along the outside of each fan. Um, the HD120s have a certainly polarizing look. They have um, exposed LEDs and it's pretty poor light diffusion to be honest, but some people might like that look. Personally, I don't, but uh, that's what you get from those older fans, I guess. Ah, why is it so zoomed in? That's weird. Anyways, um, so whether you look the, whether you like the look of the HD120s or not, you can't really argue with the specs. So like I said, they are higher end than the SP120s. We're gonna go over that, so. It costs $70 to purchase three SP120 fans, uh, and this pack comes with an RGB slash PWM controller. Uh, a comparable pack of HD120 fans, three of them with a controller, costs $90. So $20 difference, not huge, but you know, it could matter to some people. Um, so yeah, so the SP120s feature a hydraulic bearing uh, for the fan and a three pin interface, while the HD120s feature the same hydraulic bearing, which is not great, it's okay, um, but a four pin PWM connection, um, meaning you can change settings like RPM via Corsair software. So their old software is Corsair Link, and now everything is controlled through Corsair IQ, so yeah. Additionally, the HD120s can run anywhere from 800 to 1725 RPM, while the SP120s run at a fixed 1400 RPM. So if that matters to you as well, maybe you have a case of really good airflow, so you want to turn that RPM down and preserve the noise. Maybe you have a case with bad airflow, so you've got that noise protection, you can afford to run your fans really high. So you'd have that uh, flexibility there. The HD120s have a much higher static pressure rating than the SP120s and a slightly higher airflow rating and CF, measured in CFM as well. Uh, they're both static pressure, to be clear, uh, which means that they are better um, against resistance that would stop them from outputting more air. So such as being on a radiator or being against like a uh, mesh, uh, for example. They are also uh, decent though as case fans, thanks to their high airflow or their decent airflow rating. So the HD120s are better than the SP120s in both static pressure and airflow. Um, so yeah. Um, there's also an SP120 RGB Pro variant, which instead of having four RGB LEDs have eight. Um, so a three pack of the SP120 RGB Pros will slot in right between that 70 and 90 at $80. Uh, so the normal SP120 RGB fans are hard to justify these days, to be honest. Plus, Corsair's newer fans have basically phased out these older ones, although these are much cheaper. Um, but uh, So in thermal testing, um, the HD120s do beat out the SP120s, but just barely. Um, the bottom line is, if you want more control over your fan, go with the HD120s. Uh, if you simply don't care and you want the best value, maybe get the SP120s or SP120 uh, Pros. I would rather... Uh, get the SP120 non-pros because the four versus eight LED thing, I don't think that's a huge issue. They look pretty similar. Um, 
So those are fans that are older and I really probably wouldn't recommend them anymore. I believe they came out in 2017 around the same time or maybe at the same time uh, as two different options. So there's newer ones from Corsair now and they are all better, but they are also all more expensive and they all slide in at $130. We'll get to that. If I were you and I were, if I, and I was on a budget, I would, if I, and I wanted three fans, uh, to be honest, if I didn't care about RGB especially, you can get three um, Arctic P13 Bionics fans, I think, for about 40 bucks. Um, those are great fans, uh, very high performing fans. I mean, they're on par with the high end Corsair fans that I'm about to talk about. Uh, and in some cases they pass them. They're on par with like the best of these Corsair fans in terms of raw performance. Of course, maglev, mag magnetic levitation, we'll get to that is better, but okay. So the aforementioned fans have been all but phased out by the ML120, QL120, and the ultra popular, I think they're the most popular of the three, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like everyone's after them these days, the LL120 fans. So of these newer models, the ML120s are easily the best. I would recommend them over the LLs and the QLs hands down and they're the same price so video over right no i am gonna go over the differences still but it's got a longer warranty than the others five years versus two for the other two models i mean that's a big difference so you can be sure that its longevity is trusted by corsair the ml 120s they trust their product if they're willing to support it for that long uh, well at least longer than the other ones so it has a magnetic levitation fan bearing which is superior to the hydraulic bearings of the LL120 and QL120. It's the only of the three newer fans to feature this uh, bearing. So the magnetic levitation bearing increases fan efficiency um, through a lack of contact between some fan parts, which leads to less friction and wear on the fan, meaning it'll last longer. So some may argue that the QL120 and the LL120 look better than the ML120 because they have outer RGB LED rings uh, like on the outside of the fan rather than just like the blades. Um, but the increased performance and lifespan is worth it. And the ML120 RGB fans, they still look phenomenal in any case. I mean, they look good, so. Uh, well, not any case, maybe. I'm exaggerating. They look awesome. Um, even worse for the QL and LL120s, um, all three of these fans cost the same amount as I alluded to earlier, so. Three packs of each uh, coming with RGB slash PWM controllers, uh, the Lighting Node Pro for the LL and ML fans, and the Lighting Node Core for the QL. So the Core is not as good as the Pro. So the QL is even worse than the LL in my opinion, but then the best would be ML. Uh, but the QL and LL are so close. It's really the only difference I think is the fact that the LLs come with the Lighting Node Pro while it's the Core for the QL. They all cost $130 for a pack of three. Um, and I believe you can get the LL 120s for $40 each, which would actually make you be able to get them individually, three of them for 120. I'm not sure, but I know that these fans sometimes go on sale, I think for about a hundred bucks for three. So yeah. So these are all static pressure fans as well. Um, so they're optimized for use with height restrictions, such as on radiators or in front of mesh or dust filters. Um, High airflow fans, uh, that's the other like big type of fan. Those are better for use as case fans in cases without mesh ventilation. So, you know, a solid front panel or something like that. Uh, and places where airflow is just generally less restricted. Not sure which one would be better for tower heat sinks, um, but um, probably static pressure fans just because there is restriction there because the heat sink towers, of course, will be restricting airflow, so. Uh, the ML120, however, still has the highest airflow rating out of these three, um, even though they're all static pressure, followed by the LL120 and then in last place, the QL120. They all have full PWM and RGB control through software, that being IQ, although I think you can adjust the PWM stuff like the, the fan controls, RPM, uh, you know, it's custom fan curve. I don't think you would do that in IQ. I think you'd do that. I don't know if it would be in your BIOS, but I'm not totally sure. I think it might be in your BIOS or it would be in something else, some third party software, not IQ. Uh, you probably could do it in IQ, but. So the QL120 fans have an RPM range of 525 to 1500. The LL120s have an RPM range of 600 to 1500. And the ML120 fans have an RPM range of 400 to 1600, which is the largest range out of the three options. Um, 
just that's just another ace in the hole for the ML120. I mean, it really is the best. So we're gonna go on to performance more specifically. The LL120s um, have lower noise than the ML120s when run at higher RPMs. Um, the ML120s uh, handily beat out the extremely popular LL120s and the QL120s at all fan RPMs in terms of thermals. So that's pretty important. They're even comparable to some Noctua fans, actually, believe it or not. The QL120s and LL120s trade blows at different RPMs thermally. Acoustically, the QL120s have the lowest noise out of the three as a case fan and radiator fan would run at lower RPMs. At higher RPMs, the ML120s pull ahead in terms of noise, making them better thermally and acoustically than Corsair's other fans overall. The SP120s and HD120s fall below even the QL120s and LL120s on the charts, and I wouldn't recommend them much anymore as they have been phased out by viewer fans. So which one should you buy? Well, it does depend on your use case. Um, all the fans are static pressure, so you may not want to use them to push as much airflow as humanly possible. Uh, the best fans out there for, for performance and value overall, of course, are probably Noctua fans. But the Arctic P13 Bionics, also amazing. Arctic makes some good fans, check them out for sure as well. Uh, so consider those if you don't need RGB. If you don't need RGB, if you don't like RGB maybe, or you're just on a budget, get something else. You can even get cheaper uh, RGB fans from no-name brands like Up Here or bigger brands like Deep Cool. But I don't think those fans are great in terms of performance and acoustics, so keep that in mind. Um, so if you're already in the Corsair ecosystem, however, or for some reason you have your heart set on a Corsair RGB fan, there are some tips that I can offer you and I've already offered them. So if you're on a tighter budget, consider the SP120 non-pros. Uh, if you have a higher budget, go with the ML120s as they offer great thermal and noise performance. The issue with all Corsair fans is their price is not very competitive for any of them. They look great though, so you could consider them. I hope you guys have learned stuff from this video about Corsair fans. Hope I could uh, clear up any um, misconceptions you may have had or confusion about the naming schemes of these Corsair fans. I know it can be hard to keep track of the names. I, of course, had to do my research here. I did not know the differences between these fans. Um, and to, in all honesty, I thought maybe the LL120s, because they're so popular, maybe they're the best out of the three, or I thought, you know, maybe there's no difference in the three. I actually thought that the LL120s had a magnetic levitation bearing. They don't, just the ML120. So I was clueless as well. So, you know, don't don't feel bad that you didn't know too much about Corsair fans, but now you do. Hopefully you can apply that and good luck purchasing case fans. Uh, so that was Isaiah from FTW Tech and yeah, see you guys.